In this video, we're going to talk about all the best ways to get kills toward your 30 million kill achievement for Kingdom vs. Kingdom. Stick around for all the ways to get efficient kills in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and in this video, sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms, I'm going to talk about how I picked up half a billion kill points in a single KVK on my restart project. This account is now only 70 million power, and I battled in the field with only three marches. Now, toward the end of the video, I'll talk about the marches I was using. That's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is to talk about all the different ways that you can get kills, and whether you're shooting for that 30 million kill achievement, or any of the other achievements in between, maybe you just want to boost your kill score because a lot of alliances these days just won't accept you if you have a low kill point score. Well, in this video, we're going to give you every single method and talk about how I got to 30 million kills and where the majority of those kills came from. Now, I'm going to present this information to you today in the order in which I, I guess, accumulated those kills, or in other words, from the least amount of kills that I got to the most amount of kills that I got. And spoiler alert, I mean, the majority of the kills that I got were fighting in the field for objectives, but there are things that you can do that are very, very efficient. Now, this first idea of efficiency is what I want to talk about, because sometimes you'll just see mega whales run into a fight over and over, and they're going to get a ton of kills very inefficiently, sometimes trading negatively or very negatively in order to accomplish it. And that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is straight value all the way. And I did that in this KVK. In fact, the amount of troops that I had in my hospital based on the amount of resources that I burned through. And yes, I tracked through the amount of resources I have at the start of KVK, middle of KVK, different checkpoints and at the end of KVK to see like, how am I doing? I traded on average somewhere between uh, three for one and four for one throughout the entire KVK. In other words, for every one sev wound I took, on average, on average, I was inflicting three to four times as many. Now, I'm using all T5s, and I did have solid tech. In fact, my tech has advanced a fair amount now since I was actually doing a lot of that battling. And in fairness, on this account, here's what I purchased in order to get to this level of tech. I picked up the pop-up bundles at the very start of the KVK and the $5 bundle that gives you the crystal supply throughout KVK, like the gem supply, right? That's all I spent on crystal technology this entire KVK. The remainder, I mean, I battle barbs constantly. My AP bar literally never tops out, basically ever on any of my accounts. So I'm getting the most free value that you really possibly can with the exception of AoE barb farming, which I did not do, and that would get you even more value. I'm even about to unlock my sixth march at this point, which is pretty wild. I mean, I can research this pretty soon. In fact, I almost have enough crystals to do it, and then I'll be able to battle even more barbs. Okay, so that was the tech baseline for getting all these kills that I got and the trade ratio that I got, which I think is pretty important to keep in mind. Now, some of my trades, I got wrecked, but the majority went well. Let's talk about all the different ways that you can get kills and in the order in which I got those kills. Now, the least amount of kills that I got, the lowest number, was actually battling at the Altar of Darkness. This is relevant primarily for Heroic Anthem and uh, also the Light and Darkness KVK format where the Altar of Darkness is actually a contested building where it's not just like one side's kind of automatically got it, right? So in the Altar of Darkness, I picked up a couple hundred thousand kills here and there. Not all that many. And the disadvantage of fighting in the Altar of Darkness is that you only have like one march at a time. And one march at a time, hey, I mean, the upside is that your hospital doesn't fill up all that much. The downside is that you're not filling up their hospital all that much. I'm sure many of you have seen the Altar of Darkness fights that I've been doing. I'll have a card up in the top if you want to check out the Altar of Darkness fight from this particular KVK, where I picked up a couple hundred thousand kills, but not all that many. Now, the second lowest source, I mean, the next, I guess the next highest source of kills that I got from this KVK was battling people that were gathering. And we had a fun little game that we were doing during my live stream. 
uh, where we were battling in zone five over here. And I noticed that like we were all in the middle. Everybody was battling here. And some people were all the way in the back gathering. So I sent a double C and I ran around and we played a little game called Snake or Snack. Was it somebody who put a bunch of siege into a gathering node and I got to kill him? Or was it somebody who put a full fighting march and I had to run away and try not to get myself killed? Snake or snack. It was very fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. I didn't get that many kills. You do get very, very, very positive trades when you do this. Like, it's gross. You run around and you pop somebody in a gathering node. And, you know, look, like if you're looking for a gatherer, you stay zoomed out enough that you could see if there was like a red dot over the node. And then you send in a double C or a Belisarius primary jumping from node to node. And you, you can see here, this is an area where people are actually gathering, right? These are from my coalition. So you don't want to hit your own coalition, but you'd be looking for red markers for gatherers and, and you send off your gatherer killers. I got a non-trivial number of kills. I would guess maybe three or 400,000 of my kills, still a very small number, by hitting those marches that were in resource nodes, okay? So smashing gatherers is a way to get kills, and it is very, very efficient. You generally get very positive trades if you go that route. Now, the next style of getting kills, though, is perhaps even more important. It has strategic importance, and also I hate it, and also, I love it. I love it and I hate it. That is being a freaking cheeseburger. Now, for those of you who watch my live streams, cheeseburgers drive me insane. I call it cheeseburgering because I think it's cheesy. But also, it's extremely effective. What am I talking about? Let's say that um, folks are battling over a flag. In fact, let's say, even though these are from our own coalition here, that uh, people are battling for these two flags, okay? And these are two enemy alliances, and what cheeseburgering is, is where you put a march in like this city and this city and this city. You have a bunch of cities that are around a flag and you have players pop out, boom, try to knock somebody's march and get some instant proc damage and then jump back into the city before they can properly respond. And you keep doing it over and over and over until their marches are so worn out, they actually have to go march home. And this is effective for that exact reason. You bunker down around a flag and you make it so that their marches can't just sit there and do whatever they want reinforcing rallies in fact if you're being a maximally uh, efficient cheeseburger you hunt the weakest marches you possibly can this is true for any way that you're getting kills if you hunt the absolute weakest marches you can possibly find you are not only going to get better trades but i mean also the players that are weaker have weaker tech they're not going to do as as much damage to you, they're not going to have as much health or defense. You are going to freaking slay them. So that is a way to stack up a lot of kills. You be a cheeseburger. You sit in a city near a flag that's contested. There in the field, you pop out. Use a commander like Alexander the Great or Harold or Charles that has a lot of counterattacks. So they can't do a lot of damage back to you. And that does so well. And I assume you have Alexander the Great. I recommend that pretty much everybody gets Alexander the Great. So I feel like it's a pretty safe assumption that almost any player who's following my guides to any extent has the ability to do trade positive city pop outs. And if enough people do that, literally they have to back off your territory. They can't stay there anymore. So it has strategic value, even though I, it sucks to be on the receiving end. Like you can't just let the enemy walk all over your land, bro. Like that just doesn't make any sense. Okay, so cheeseburgers. That's one way. You can get a pretty decent amount of kills. I would guess that I picked up no more than like a million total of my 30 million plus kills by being a cheeseburger. Yeah, I did it, but it's slow going. It's very slow going compared to when you bring more marches to the field. I brought three to the field, all KVK. So this is like a low yield, but high importance activity in my estimation. And yeah, I don't know. Some people do it more than others. The next major source of kills is what I'm going to call wanderers, okay? Wanderers or people that are basically returning from a rally or going to a rally. And I can't tell you how many people, oh my God, when we were fighting on this stinking pass right over here, there were times when the enemy was killing our wanderers that were like walking right past their forts to try to join a rally. 
or we were killing their wanderers, returning back from something. Like, people that are just not paying attention to their march, you can get so many kills, it's disgusting. And I'm, look, like, it, it, they're kills. You're putting troops in their hospital. It's a little cheesy, but also it's just straight value and they should be paying attention. So if you find a wanderer who's just joining a rally and not looking where they're pathing or leaving a rally, especially that has just ended, when a rally ends, all those weak marches, you get really positive trades. I'm talking like 10 to 1 trades, but you get a small amount of kills typically because, I mean, the march is already nearly dead. That is a way to get a very reasonable amount of kills. I think I probably pulled down probably 4 million kills, I would guess. I mean, I wish I had a way of knowing, like, under these classifications exactly how many I got. But I would guess, like, 4 million kills. I didn't do it that much, but every time I did it, it was so trade positive. It was really gross. I mean, sometimes in a single march, I'd pull down, like, 100,000 kills or more with, like, somebody who's just wandering in a way that they're just, like, not paying attention to their march. It's crazy. Now, the final way that I already said at the start of the video, which is the bulk of my kills. I mean, we're talking, like, more than two-thirds of my kills are from just straight up brawling in the field over objectives. Just straight up objective fighting. Now, there is one other way in which you can get a bunch of kills, maybe two, that I just want to mention very briefly that I really don't like. Those two ways that I don't like and I generally don't participate in are random pointless skirmishes, which I really like. Sometimes, I guess maybe I'll dip my toe in there, but like I generally avoid entirely. And something that I have avoided entirely is kill trading, where, like, at the end of the KVK, I mean, you'll see people say, like, trading, you know, 5 million kills for 5 million kills, and like, oh my god, oh, that's so inefficient, one for one, oh, that's so bad, I just can't even, the resource cost of doing one for one T5 trades, not that you do T5, but like, I don't know, it's, it's just insane, it is insane how much food, you know, resources you'd have to spend. I was going to say food, wood, and gold because I just use infantry, but it is insane the amount of resources you spend. If you're just trading, it's so, so inefficient. The whole, I mean, like, you can find better ways in the open field, and I did that all KVK. Now, a few things that are going to help you along the way is, like, don't get your march sad-faced, right? The opposite of hunting weak marches is don't get sad-faced. Unless you're fighting for a strategic objective where you need to be there, like, there are times where we did a fort drop and like, man, we we're at the pass and we fort dropped up over here and, you know, it didn't work. I think it goes right over here. It didn't work, but like you stay there till your march is dead because it's a fort drop. You want to see that card up in the top where we did that fort drop and you can see exa exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, more marches means that you're going to get more kills. And that also means typically that You've spread your gear out across those marches, so you're decreasing your efficiency with each march that you bring in exchange for being able to bring more marches and do more damage, which is very powerful in and of itself. In fact, it's so powerful that I feel like in a perfect world, you could get every player in your kingdom farming enough resources to bring five marches the entire KVK, and I would have done that with this account if I had gone in to this KVK with that plan, but I spent pretty much the majority of my materials and patterns getting to three really killer marches. And I think a future plan for me on this account is how do I get to five marches so that I don't have to basically spend all KVK getting to the 30 million kills. But I mean, I almost ran out of gold, this KVK, which means that I really need to make a farm for this account, which I haven't done because it's like, oh, I got a farm for my man. I got a farm for my restart. I mean, it's just a lot of accounts to manage. The combinations that I used that worked very well included Guan CJ. I used Alex Esong and I used Trajan Ethel. And I used them all KVK. And my best trades came from my Guan CJ. But let's just think about that for a second. A part of the reason that that's the case is that I've got other marches like Trajan and Ethel, which primarily are debuffing the enemy. I'm reducing their stats by a lot. I'm buffing my Guan CJ March with more skill damage and rage restoration. I've even got Alex Esong potentially throwing shields out to protect my Guan and CJ, which Guan is going to get a little damage boost whenever he's getting a shield. So I mention all of this because, yeah, my Guan CJ reports were my most positive reports no question. 
Although Alex Esong did some really good stuff. But a part of the reason that the Guan CJ did the most work is that they're receiving the most benefit from all the other marches that I had that were just buffing and debuffing like crazy. So uh, that worked really, really well. And I mean, gosh, if I were to extend to five marches, well, I mean, I've made dedicated videos about the best five marches in the game. But the big consideration for me is going to be the following. Would I make a sort of 3-1-1 murder ball? In other words, three infantry marches, one cavalry, and one archer. And the advantage of that is that I have a really good march on the field all the time that I could reinforce a rally or garrison with, which there definitely were times, this KVK, where I would run around and I would have, you know, like no cavalry march and there's a cav rally going on and I'd have to figure out how to get Minamoto double C in the position to reinforce the rally. Or uh, when we were doing archer rallies, I mean, I did this on stream, I think, I think, I didn't stream all the fighting, but... I ran around with double C and El Cid for just like a bunch of archers to reinforce rallies. Cause like, you know, the hasty departure is really good, right? That's a great talent. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's some other way that I, I could have configured that to make it all work. But if I have a 3 1 1 configuration, the advantage is again, easy rally joining, easier flag joining, although joining a flag should be straight. It's fairly straightforward, I think, uh, to get into and hop to a flag if you need to. So rally joining, flag joining, I think is much better with a 3-1-1. Or if I want to double down and just do five infantry marches, man, which I kind of just want to do that for the sake of doing it. Uh, because A, it's good, and I have a card up in the top. You probably want to check this video out explaining exactly how good. In fact, with test data showing exactly how good it is to use a specific troop type over bringing mixed troops. That's something I should potentially consider. The only downside I have with it, literally, is that uh, I'm going to go all out of re uh, certain types of resources, which is, you know, okay, literally, like, no use for my stone. Uh, and also, the other downside, again, is just joining stuff. So, we'll see. Uh, I think that the 30 million kills, realistically, is not obtainable for every player. I'm just going to throw it out there, and maybe I should have put this at the start of the video, this took me a huge amount of time and a reasonable amount of resources, to be honest, to do it efficiently. If you were more inefficient than I was, you probably could get to the 30 million kills sooner. And I think five marches is the very best way to just accelerate your progress toward this achievement if you want it. And to be honest, I really do feel like this season of conquest equipment is very strong. The amount of stats you get per material that you spend is better than you'll find literally anywhere else. Even better than some of these set bonuses, which is pretty wild when you start to think about that. So if you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, throw a like on here, consider subscribing. Consider tapping the info button up top to find one of the other videos that I mentioned uh, during the course of this longer form video, which wasn't my expectation, but there really was a lot to talk about on all the ways to get kills. And I feel pretty good about half a billion kill points, Probably about a hundred bucks spent on crystals. In fairness, I did spend a hundred bucks. If more people are fighting in the field, your team is going to be more effective. I hope that you enjoyed. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.